As the sun rises over the bustling city of Accra, a new kind of energy is taking hold. It's the buzzing of innovation, the hum of creativity, and the excitement of possibility. Welcome to Innovating Accra, charting the rise of Tech Titans, a groundbreaking documentary that explores the explosive growth of tech startups and innovation in the hearts of Ghana. We were one of the first people to actually bring BlackBerry to Ghana to do um, mobile apps, and that was like way in the beginning, right? From the towering skyscrapers of the central business district to the vibrant streets of Kosu, we will take you on a journey through the edge cutting world of technology and entrepreneurship. We will introduce you to inspiring founders, makers, and disruptors who are shaking up the status quo and forging a new path for themselves and their country. We have not yet seen a community built around um, helping a particular project in a mosque at the scale at which we are looking at. So come along for the ride as we delve into the heart of Accra's tech scene and uncover the stories that are shaping the future of innovation. Join us for a journey into the heart of innovation and see for yourself why Accra is becoming the tech hub for Africa. As the tech industry in Accra continues to grow, so too do the number of co-working spaces and tech hubs. These spaces provide a vibrant and collaborative environment for entrepreneurs and innovators to come together, share ideas, and create something truly special. One of the most exciting co-working spaces in Accra is the Accra Digital Center. Here, startups and entrepreneurs have access to state-of-the-art facilities and resources, including high-speed internet, meeting rooms, and event spaces. But perhaps the most vulnerable aspect of the Accra Digital Center is the community it fosters. By bringing together people from a variety of backgrounds and disciplines, the center creates an environment that is rich with creative energy and collaboration. The government identified a gap uh, uh, regarding support for startups, tech startups, and uh, as a result of that gap that was identified, the government decided to establish the Ghana Digital Centers Limited to provide key support. So the center primarily offers infrastructure support. Okay, um, actually I first have my first meeting with this company around 2018, 2019. And I was very fortunate to be the one who installed their network I mean, you see, install their network and their Wi-Fi so that they can have connectivity with their computers. So that is when I met the company. And I also found out that they are also doing program for startup. So I, I was also lucky to join the first batch of that program. And during that program, I was able to learn a lot and it has helped me up to date. You see, I was able to learn how to approach new customers, how to keep records of my financial aspect and my business processes uh, and then beside that to uh, awarded with some money which the money I've also used to invest in my company and since then I was serving them with my IT expertise doing, giving them services and support relating to the IT in terms of hardware and software as well. Another hub that is making waves in the Accra tech scene is iSpace Ghana. This tech hub provides startups with the support and resources they need to bring their ideas to life, including mentorship, networking opportunities, and access to funding. But iSpace isn't just about providing practical support. It's also about creating a community of like-minded individuals who share a passion for innovation and creativity. 
Um, over here, there are a lot of events, there are a lot of people that you meet with a lot of brilliant ideas as well. So sometimes you can bounce off ideas with people who always give you their thoughts or who always give you a particular um, idea, even with things that you've not even talked about. So I think it's really, it's really the biggest uh, impact I have seen where uh, almost every day there is something going on. There are people you can talk to, there are people who can advise you on what to do, there are people who can tell you. Um, give you some ideas, connect you to other people, other people who can help you. So it's it's a really it's a really active community in that sense. So I really appreciate being part of the iSpace community. Um, iSpace supports the growth and scaling of um, startups by one thing that we're very good at providing that conducive environment first. And by that I mean giving them the space, giving them the resources that they need. The resources being whether you introduce them to funding or we fund some of the projects themselves or um, through mentorship programs that we run. And I think for us, one of the key elements in that also is um, the mentorship side, but it's a mental mentorship rather than just talking to a person. We look at your mental health and all of these other things. The physical well-being is important. And then on the scaling side, we've been able to introduce people to different markets because we have relationship with other hubs in Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria particularly. So what we do is we introduce some of the startups to um, these markets and they're able to scale. Um, we also work with a lot of the hubs um, you know, regionally. So then we're able to then scale either our programs or encourage them to then go into some of these markets. So yeah, we do it in, in various formats. Both the Accra Digital Center and iSpace Ghana are a testament to the power of collaboration and community in driving innovation and growth in the tech industry. And as more and more co-working spaces and tech hub continue to pop up throughout Accra, it is clear that the city is becoming a hub of tech innovation and entrepreneurship unlike any other. In the bustling city of Accra, a new wave of entrepreneurs is making their mark on the tech industry. These innovative startups are changing the face of Ghanaian businesses and creating a buzz in the international market. Let's take a closer look at some of the inspiring startup stories from Accra. These young and driven entrepreneurs have taken on the challenge of building a successful tech startup in Accra. We will hear from them about their motivations, their inspirations, and the obstacles they have overcome to make their businesses a reality. So I'm Pedigree is a technology company. We build software and assemble technologies for two main primary purposes brand protection and brand promotion we have um, an emphasis uh, in the pharmaceutical area so I, i'll explain a little bit about the brand promotion because that's that's like the anchor of our work by brand protection we mean that we make it possible for consumers to activate something we in the industry called end user authentication so one consequence of having a lot of technologies at the behest of a lot of people around the world and virtually at very low cost is that you know people get access to goods the internet it improves lives and so on but there's also a negative underbelly which is that the ease with which people can duplicate articles and goods and materials have been increased so individuals even at home or in small warehouses with limited resources can virtually produce goods that mimic the outward appearance of what the original product may be. So if you buy a fake sneakers or you buy a fake cologne or you buy a fake shirt, the consequences are significant, but they are not as significant as when you buy a fake medicine. Imagine you are down with malaria and you require an anti-malaria for your healing. Or let's say um, in the case of another very sensitive medicine, uh, in the case of, say, female reproductive health medicine, uh, you take medicines like emergency contraceptive pills, for instance. And if a young lady or a lady takes an emergency contraceptive pill, they are expecting a certain timely medical intervention in their body. Now, in all these instances, if the medicine is fake, 
then what happens is that we are denying the person the opportunity to get healing they are losing their money we are undermining the healthcare delivery process and even more dangerously because these fake uh, medicines are produced under unregulated unhygienic circumstances they often contain toxins so you are losing your money you are not getting healing and you are also on top of all that introducing poisonous substances into your body and whereas the whole world is affected it is the developing markets such as uh, africa and certain places in asia that are worse hit because of the porosity in regulatory controls and border management and other issues of in technical and infrastructural significance so our work primarily has been to figure out how we can use technology to bridge this important gap how do we make it possible for governments with limited income and indeed households and consumers of limited income to still get the right medicines and our solution was pretty simple to serialize all medicines and then at the point of purchase or at the point of consumption have the end user or the patient using their mobile phone to validate the specific pack of medicine they have before they consume it so in a simple way it's a bit like walking to a drugstore buying a pack of medicine and being given the opportunity to ask the manufacturer whether this specific pack is indeed coming from them has the right configuration of active ingredients and you know it's safe for you to consume and instantaneously in real time within a few seconds you get a message either telling you that indeed this is an original pack and so you should go ahead and take it or telling you that no this is not an original pack it may be counterfeited and advising you on some steps to take Nelson Kluge. Um, I am in, I've been I've been a software developer for about 10 years now and um, I do iPhone development Android development web development backend I'm, I'm i'm sort of i'm full stack at, as, as they call it um, our startup is in social impact it's called adini um so our main focus is to help masjids uh, what's like commonly called mosques to connect with audience around them so we identify the particular problem um, or we think an op there's an opportunity to expand mosques just be beyond their geographical um, location so um, I live in an area where there is a there is a masjid. Every Friday, I see a lot of people, but people come and go. Sometimes some of them travel outside, but then they want to find a way to help the mosque, either to grow the mosque itself or to allow the mosque to help people in the communities. At the moment, there is no direct way to help except they go through middlemen, people they already knew in the area, and they have to give um, either cash or kind to help the mosques. So this platform is to help people like that connect to their masjids and then they can help so the, the help can come from the in different forms so sometimes a mosque can be embarking on a particular project and seeking for uh, soliciting for funds um, it doesn't have to be limited to only the people who come to the mosque or people that they actively reach out to there are people all over the world who are actively looking for masjids to help there are people who also live to live in the area who are also looking for a way to help so this app is to connect those kind of masjid with those kind of people. Now, the app doesn't just focus on um, the monetary aspect of it. There, there's another part where people can also connect to the mosque and listen to the sermons. So maybe you are stuck somewhere on a Friday, or maybe you want to listen to some inspirational messages from a particular imam that you like. When you come to the app, you see a number of them, and then you can choose and follow a particular mosque that you like, and you can listen to the sermons from the mosque. Okay, my name is um, Ali Rutahiru. My company name is Innovative Common Enterprise. I'm into technology, both hardware and software. In the hardware aspect, we install CCTV, electrical fence, time attendance, and other um, security appliances. And in the software aspect, too, we use some of the available commercial software, like Windows Server and then Oracle ERP. And we also develop custom software for a specific need to meet a company's demand. From mobile labs to fighting counterfeit drugs, these startups in Accra are tackling a diverse range of problems. 
we will showcase some of the innovative solutions they have come up with and how they are changing the lives of Ghanaians. We started somewhere around 2007-2008. We became full-blown commercial around 2012-2013. And since then, we've, we've grown from Ghana, we've gone to Nigeria, we've gone to about 15 different countries in Africa and Asia. And, you know, we have received a number of uh, significant mentions and awards, the most prestigious of which was the school award, uh, which we got um, last 2019. Uh, but for me, the real impact, the real actual measurable significant impact has to do with the millions of people, you know, whose consumption experience we have been able to impact. So we have over a billion product authentications now. And that for us is our highest in index indicator as far as our impact is concerned. The millions of households whose consumption patterns we have been able to uh, influence positively. Building a successful startup is never easy. And these entrepreneurs in Accra face unique challenges. Let's delve into the obstacles they have had to overcome from funding to regulatory hurdles it's it's two things we need um, developers or well, we need software developers um, in order to get those people we need we need funds right and at the moment because we don't have the needed funds it's one or two people who are not even full-time or I mean, one or two of us we are not even full-time currently um, working on it that slows down slows down the pace at which we can move as well so um, I think if you extend it to the to the tech sector um, in general, um, it, it's it's difficult because most of the people you are looking for are maybe working for companies and earning in the foreign currency, so we cannot really compete by paying them in, in, in local currency. So that, that that's that's the main problem. If we have a lot of people who a lot of developers who are focused on working here, I think it's it's really going to help. See, before I started the program with this inno hub you see i was having some challenges regarding on how to approach customers and particularly uh, record skipping you get it but when i get myself involved in that program i was able to learn a lot about uh, data collection and data preservation and then how and I also develop confidence on meeting new customers and talking to people i mean to display the um, the services and then the product that I have to offer. Despite the challenges, the future is bright for the Ghanaian startups. We talk to the experts and industry leaders about the potential for growth in the tech industry and what the future might hold. When you look at the opportunities they have asked, but how do you scale and be able to take advantage of all that? You are limited one by numbers, talk about funding. I mean, it's a centre that does not receive any government, I mean, receive no government subvention or, or funding. Everything we run here, from training to providing all the support we give to startups, is through internally generated funds. And so you can imagine if we are getting some funding sources from elsewhere, we could do pretty much more. So that is one huge challenge that we have to we have to try and scale, and it's the reason we are pushing on all fronts to bring in some partnership that will also be able to support us, help us. Uh, let me yeah, just to add to that, uh, infrastructure is also a huge challenge, and you would want to break that down into physical and digital infrastructure. So uh, a startup needs uh, a space to work from. Uh, a space to to locate or co-locate and uh, this is this is this is a huge gap there's a huge infrastructure deficit in the country and that doesn't stimulate you know a multiplication of startups in the country now you would want to talk about a digital infrastructure the like uh, uh, internet connectivity uh, uh, digital tools to work with we all, we all know the connectivity in Ghana uh, can, can be improved on. There are still some areas in some regions that do not have uh, uh, connectivity at all or that are struggling with uh, stable internet connectivity. 
and 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 digital really thrives on on on, on internet connectivity. So it's it's one challenge to uh, to us as a centre. Um, the challenges in the tech ecosystem is huge, right? Um, it cuts across funding, human capital, policy, um, infrastructure, all of these things, right? Um, because what you find is a lot of the tech um, developers that we have are very, um, I would say, remote um, focused. So when they even acquire the skills to then work with um, startups, they want to work remotely. Some of them want to charge, you know, three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars a month, when in reality some of these startups can't afford that, right? See, so then what that happens is we're not able to put these kind of products out, right? And then when you look at policy, we don't really have an out-and-out -out policy that supports entrepreneurship or startups. So what we're doing with that is we're working with um, government at the moment to draft the Ghana Startup Bill. Um, which looks at infrastructure, which looks at um, access to market, gender, funding, and all of these other things. And I think when you look at the human capital side of things, we don't have that many skilled um, people in our industry, right? Because in a startup, you need so many different skills. You have people that can analyze data, you have people that can even analyze the market, people that can do UI, UX, and there's not a lot of those people. So for us, um, particularly with iSpace, what we focus on that training, we're doing a lot of training programs. As we continue our exploration of the Accra tech scene, we shift our focus to the impact of technology on the Ghanaian society, from improving access to healthcare and education to increasing financial inclusion Technology is making a difference in people's lives. Let's dive into some examples of how tech is changing Ghana. I think the biggest is the social impact of what we are doing, right? So there are lots of crowdfunding, there are lots of crowdfunding platforms where people go and raise funds. Sometimes it's one time, one off, one off for a specific project or for a particular cause. I think what we are doing is trying to create a particular impact in a particular niche, right? So we are we are focusing on the masjids. There are a lot of masjids around. So many of them. Almost every community has at least one. Can you imagine if all those masjids are empowered to support projects, to help people within the communities? It's it's like we are going to amplify that impact times times. 200 times 2000 it's unquantifiable so that is where i feel i feel like this has the biggest impact because we are giving it to people you are going to help people who already have a structure to help communities now how we do it is to bring medicine manufacturers uh government regulators in this in this country the fda um and telco operators to the same table to work seamlessly. Now, we, as I mentioned, we serialize every pack. By serialization, I mean we put a code on every pack of medicine that is to be sold. Now, that pack, that that pack bearing that serial number, you know, makes it unique. And so, when the consumer buys that pack of of medicine, all they have to do is to lift the code on the product and test it on their phone at no cost, free on all the 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 networks at no cost to the consumer so you, it's as simple as picking the code on the pack texting on your phone and then within a few seconds receiving a message telling you whether you have the right product or not these are just a few examples of how technology is changing the face of ghana by improving access to healthcare and creating social impact, technology is having a positive impact on people's lives. And the best part is, this is just the beginning. As the tech industry in Accra continues to grow and evolve, we can expect to see even more innovative solutions to the challenges facing the Ghanaian society.
the Ghanaian government has played a critical role on the rise of tech startups in Accra. We will explore the policies and initiatives that have helped to create an environment where tech startups can thrive. One of the main um, partners that I would like to acknowledge will be NEIP. Right? Um, NEIP very much focused on supporting entrepreneurs locally, so they have a lot of programs like You Start that they then um, work with hubs, you know, like iSpace, we train entrepreneurs and then they get funded. Um, and then working with Google locally, that also helps. Um, and then World Bank, a lot of projects that we do with World Bank and the rest. And I think um, for me, those partnerships and even partnering with hubs themselves, right? Because it's something that we believe that um, programs that we run needs to cut across all various regions. So working with other hubs, so we work with the likes of Open Academy, we work at Hapa Space in Kumasi. See, so for me, those were the kind of partnerships that we focus on. Um, right now, as we speak, I think one of the major part, um, partnerships that we would like to focus on would be the banks, right? Because again, funding is a fundamental thing for us. So we want to partner with banks to look at ways in which they can even give some like an overdraft for startups, right? Because then it will help them employ more people, pay people very well for people to stay, right? And also be able to invest in their products for them to scale. So I do not think that the government is doing anything specifically to help technology uh, practitioners and the tech industry per se. Um, 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 as I said, the, the whole cultural disposition of the country is not at that level. We still see technology as something distant you know it is not a go-to uh source of uh, solution let me give you a very good example um so you 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 have um uh, one of the big things that has affected almost everybody in this country is the introduction of the ghana card right um now if you look at the problems that that generated it was just ridiculous you you, you human beings had to get up from their home, stop what they are doing, go to wherever they must, you know, go, Ghana card office or whatever it is, uh, sit in long queues, you know, sometimes waste the whole day and still not get a card. You can easily solve that with, you know, a software that just automates the process. Number one, you text your identity. Number two, you are logged. Number three, you are given a number and a date on which you should appear at a specified location. Number four, you go there and then you get taken care of. And then once your card is ready, again, you get a message and then you go and pick it up. There was absolutely no need for all that ridiculous hassle. This is, these are basics. These are not the kind of technologies that you need to build uh, electric cars or to fire missiles into space. These are basic codes that, you know, uh, first year university students could, should be able to write. The fact that we went through all that, and they didn't have a single conversation about the need to use some of these tools to alleviate some of these social problems. That was where the society stands as far as technology is concerned. So this, this, we are not thinking about technology. There's no budget, in, there's no significant component in the government budget for technology. And so support for tech-focused companies is virtually non-existent. And it's one area in which we need a lot of activism uh, to change. In Accra, entrepreneurs face unique challenges in accessing capital, but the city's thriving tech scene offers many opportunities for collaboration and mentorship. As a centre, we have tried engaging other partners to help us in the programmes that we all spoke about, I mean, most of the programmes. I mean, collaborating helps, it helps to build benchmarks, for instance, we are, we are liaison with some outside tech parks to learn best practices and I think all these help you to, to grow and without such partnerships it's mostly you don't you don't grow you don't you don't you are not able to scale as quickly as you can when you share it helps when you learn it, it all helps so partnerships play a big role and I believe we should open up more I mean the space to allow in more I mean, through training, through funding, all these contribute to helping um, a nation grow. So, yeah, I believe we should do more of that.
So what we did right from the word go was to build the partnerships. Number one of the telco companies. We didn't want to have to go and build an independent structure. There was an existing telco industry that was doing pretty well. You may have realized that Africa, unlike Europe and certain places in Asia, completely bypassed the telephone age. We didn't move from a place where we didn't have telephones like Europe did to a place where every home had a telephone before going into the mobile phone age. We skipped from not having phones straight to having mobile phones. So we just completely disrupted that process. So we thought that we should take advantage of that. If mobile phones have become so defining within the lives of Africans and you carry it everywhere you go, then it makes sense to leverage that sort of system. And in that scenario, we realized that we needed very, very closely knitted relationships with the telcos. Through access to funding and collaboration, startups in Accra are charting a new path in the tech industry, and the city's future looks brighter than ever. As we wrap up our journey through the Accra tech scene, it's time to look ahead to the future. And the future looks bright. The tech industry in Accra is growing at an incredible pace. But what does the future hold for these innovative startups and industry as a whole? Let's take a closer look at what's in store for Ghanaian tech industry. The future of tech in Ghana is huge, right? Like, let's not even doubt that for a second. Because you can see a lot of the programs that the government wants to do. A lot of the infrastructure things that have been put in place now. Um, when we first started 10 years ago, there was only three hubs, right? Now, it's mushroom to about 62, 67 hubs across the 16 regions, right? So that tells you that entrepreneurs now have access to resources. They will have access to hubs. They're going to train them from a technical point of view, right? See, so the human capital that like we talked about earlier is going to grow. We're going to see more products being made, more people going to be interested in um, what they call it, investing in Ghana when it comes to tech, right? And so for me, the role that iSpace will play in it is ensure that we're always ahead of the curve. So bringing in partners, bringing in investors, bringing in um, talking to government on policy to ensure that our ecosystem is um, standardized, right? We don't want any and anybody just doing what they want, pretty much. So we want some standards in the ecosystem, but we want to have a value chain approach so that um, it's almost like the IPMCs or the iSpaces and all of these are the people you train people this is what you do but then what next you get them a job and from the job people pay taxes and so we need to have that standard we need to have that structure and as we continue our journey through the growth and innovation of tech startups in Accra we asked some of the experts we spoke with what advice they would give to anyone looking to start a startup in Ghana's tech scene the first advice is do not give up Sometimes it appears as though what you are doing has no meaning because you can work for about a year or two and not see any results. But you have to continue believing that the problem you are trying to solve is worth solving and do not give up because the road of an entrepreneur is very, very challenging and lonely. Sometimes for a few years there is no reward. But if you keep at it, and you believe that you are solving a problem that other people, so many people experience the problem, finally, finally, you are going to crack it. Um, I would say, if you want to start a career in the tech industry, I would say welcome, right? But it's not easy, it's hard, right? And pick a space that you want to be in. Don't think tech is only about coding. There are people that do product design, product management, um, product development, you know, UI, UX, so many things. And you've got the business development side of tech and you even got the funding side of tech, right? So pick that particular field, know what it is that you're good at, get mentorship, go to hubs, go to spaces that you can learn from, be with people with like-minded right um, individuals and learn and learn and learn but do not do it for money like i really want to emphasize do not do it for money because the guys that are making the money are the people that started 10 15 years ago 
right? See, so do it for the experience. Get yourself involved in a lot of projects so that you can then have something. We call it a portfolio to show, right? Because the more projects you do, the more experience you get, the more credible you are, right? See, so if you want to come into the tech space, be credible, have integrity, don't steal codes, don't hijack codes. You know, when the client says they pay you for X, deliver X, deliver it on time and just build yourself and you know find spaces that you need to be in and everything will work itself out you see everything starts at a step you get it because i made this company i mean when my knowledge and competence is at a very low low ground but through participation with this company i was able to build it small by small up to this level so by now uh, when I met the cust when I met this company, I was having few customers, but now I'm having plenty of customers, and I'm also able to develop my own software. So you see, I didn't start it at a go. I started gradually based on the advices that I have from this company and then participation with them. Wise words indeed from the experts who have helped shape the tech startup scene in Accra. As we look ahead to the future of the tech industry in Accra, it is clear that there are many reasons to be optimistic. With a growing number of startups supporting government policies and focus on solving local problems, the stage is set for a continued growth and innovation. It will be exciting to see what the future holds for the next tech titans of Accra.